Hello, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna build ourselves a computer. I've got my motherboard, RAM, storage, CPU, graphics card, power supply. We've got everything we need to build a computer. Oh no, I have forgotten to buy the case to put all this into. Whatever shall I do? If only I had some sort of machine that I could use to extrude plastic in a filament form to make the thing that I would need to put all this into. The host gasps. Oh look, I do have one of those things and behold, I have a 3D printed computer case. Who to thunk it? So now that we have this, let's get started. That's right, today on the channel, we are gonna be building the single print pewter. It's an all-in-one, fully 3D printed, computer case. Well, it's more of an open air test bench. And you can find the files for this on printables and shout out to Daduos, who is the original designer of this part. So this again is a single piece, fully 3D printed computer case. And I printed this in PETG on my Bamboo X1C. And funnily enough, this print has given me the most issues this year of anything I've printed in terms of sheer numbers of failures for a single part. This is the one we're gonna be using today. And this is the fourth time I've printed this case. And I'm gonna show you why. Uh, this case itself, uh, I tried printing in ABS first and actually ASA too, I believe. Um, you know, on this channel, we print a lot of ABS and ASA. Uh, and it, while the design would probably be fine with PLA, it's a computer case, it's gonna get a little bit warm. I'm like, you know, we'll go with something a little bit more thermally stable and able to resist those temperatures a bit better. Plus, I actually don't have a lot of PLA. The design of this case itself with the sharp corners and uh, where you see it goes from a really fat size down to a skinny size. Yeah, I had a lot of layer adhesion issues and cracking uh, due to cooling, I believe, uh, of these parts. And this is ABS printed without a fan enclosed. Now it is a little chilly in my garage, so that may be the factor there. Part of this might be also the design. Uh, there's really sharp corners here uh, when we do have these size transitions and just that's a lot of internal stresses. One plastic cools and unfortunately, uh, none of the ABS cases that I printed are usable in my opinion. Probably could save them with a little bit of gloop or uh, acetone to kind of glue these cracks back together but we're not gonna risk it. Now for those at home going, oh, you, you probably don't have a lot of experience printing ABS or ASA. That's probably why it's cracking. Your settings aren't right. Just a reminder, over the past month here, I've actually gone ahead and printed an entire set of T45 Power Armor from the Fallout series uh, that we are actually building and finishing on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out for that. And all of it is in ABS or ASA. And I didn't really have these layer adhesion or cracking issues. So I'm really gonna chalk it up to just the geometry of this part. That's just, it's not conductive to be imprinted in a material that has shrink issues. So something to keep in mind whenever you're printing something. Some materials just don't work for the project you're working on. So instead, I loaded some PETG in the bamboo and printed this case here and this came out perfect. We got no issues. Now this case is 250 millimeters on the X. So if you're trying to print this on a Creality Ender 3, for example, with 230 bed, uh, you're not gonna have too much luck. Uh, but anything with a 250 bed or larger will be able to print this. And I did have to print this with an internal brim uh, because of the size constraints. I actually couldn't use an external brim, but this was enough and I didn't have any issues of it popping off the bed. So we've got our case all printed here. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly clean this up and remove the brim. And we're gonna get started building this computer. So let's build this computer. Now, first off, the hardware I'm using today uh, is really nothing special. This isn't really a computer channel. I don't have a, a Ryzen 7000 series motherboard processor with a, a GTX 40 bazillion. No, we're, we're using some old hardware I have on hand and actually we're pretty much rebuilding the computer that I started streaming on this channel with. Um, and once you find out what I was using, it may surprise you. So starting off, we got the motherboard and the RAM. Now this motherboard is a, uh, put it this way, it's got a floppy connector. Uh, that that kind of tells you how far back we're going. Originally, this actually had an E8400 dual core on it, but I did do a pin mod with a flashed modded BIOS. So this actually has a Xeon X5450 in here. So even though this is ancient, uh, we're rocking a quad core Xeon. So it's better than nothing, I guess. Now to pair with that, uh, we do have some of the most special RAM in the world, some SLI certified DDR2. And to pair with our four gigs of SLI RAM, DDR2, we got uh, four more gigs here of RAM from AliExpress. So we're just gonna go ahead, get these installed. 
And now we're gonna install our heat sink. Now this is a Cooler Master. It's a Cooler Master. I don't know exactly which one it is. Let's get our fan installed here. Now let's get this installed in the case. Now, uh, one critique I do have for this case here, and I'll talk about that while I deburr it, is while it is nice that it is a single print, um, and you don't really have to do anything other than just build the computer in it, there are no heat sets for anything screwing in. So whenever you're screwing into this case here, you're screwing directly into plastic. So in terms of repeated use, long-term use for this, if you wanted to use this as like a test bench, uh, to build multiple printers in. You may want to download the uh, step file for this, the source file, and modify it so that you could put some heat set inserts here when you're screwing your actual motherboard and other components down, simply for the fact that you're screwing into plastic, which eventually will wear out. And also you gotta be careful not to screw in too tight or you'll just rip the threads right out and then the entire part is pretty much garbage at that point. So now we take our case. Now, if you did have that little shield, you'd probably put it in now. I don't have it. This thing probably hasn't had one in over a decade. So we're just gonna go without it. Now this case is designed with MATX motherboards in mind. Uh, if you do wanna use something bigger, uh, it may work, it may not work, it just depends. You may have to modify it. Also, one thing you're gonna have to pay attention to, and I've already checked it on this one, is the fact that uh, hopefully you have enough clearance for everything. There are standoffs underneath uh, that do hold the motherboard up. So all your little pins underneath hopefully should clear, uh, but you are gonna wanna double check that and ensure you aren't uh, bending your motherboard, attaching anything. Uh, and if there is something sticking out, well, you're gonna have to clear it. Either modify the STL and reprint or dig out the Dremel. Now we need to put a power supply in here. Now the power supply we're using is a Corsair, uh, it's a 600 watt, 650. Um, I'm using it because it's the only free power supply I have. And this one, um, I did the thing you're not supposed to do. This was a broken power supply that I fixed by opening. Don't do that. But it does kind of sort of work, but not reliably to the point that I didn't use it in a proper build. But for these purposes, it's gonna do just fine. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. So let's get this in here. Now you can route some of these wires through here. Make it a little bit more organized. And this is our CPU power. And then once we get that on, we can rest it in its operating position, which is like this. So now we're gonna go ahead, install our SSD. Now, when you go to install your SSD here, if you're using NVMe, obviously you don't have to worry about this, but if you do have a traditional SSD here, uh, there's two slots for them. One of these slots does envelop the SSD a little bit more than the other. So if you're using an SSD that generates a lot of heat, uh, you may not wanna use this slot, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. Get that SSD connected with some power now. Okay. And now we're gonna get to the GPU. And this is the only part of this that actually isn't original to when I started streaming. So when I first started streaming on this channel for the very first couple streams, it was just a laptop and a C920. Uh, but once I actually got a separate camera and whatnot, that laptop wasn't gonna cut it. And I built this computer out of literally a bunch of stuff I found in the basement. And I paired it with a GTX 1060 that I had recently upgraded from in my main computer. Now the GTX 1060, it's a NVIDIA card. It has an NVENC encoder, which considering the age of this computer, that was pretty much what allowed it to stream because the GPU was doing most, if not all of the work in that case. But unfortunately that GTX 1060 is now living in my wife's computer. So in this one, we're gonna have to go with something a little bit older. We're gonna go with a 7870. That's right, two gigs of VRAM, which at one point was a lot and now it's nothing. So we're gonna go ahead, get that installed. And it just sits up here and there is a retention screw hole here to hold it in place. Got 
And of course, this is gonna need some power. So let's go ahead and give it some power. And before we give the GPU some power, I gotta give this motherboard some power as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. And last but not least, uh, we're gonna put a RGB fan here. And by RGB, I mean B, because this fan just does blue. And we're just gonna mount this here, just for some additional airflow. And chassis fan. And there you have it. The printer built on the single print pewter case is now complete. And at first, you know what? I kind of like this aesthetic. Now, obviously open air computers are not something all of us can run. I've got a dog, I've got a kid. That does not mix well with open air computers. You know what? It is not the most stable. I wouldn't really put it right near the edge of a desk. Uh, but the weight of the power supply and the center of gravity being pretty centered does keep it relatively stable. So I'm gonna go find a monitor and a keyboard. And we're gonna power this up and we're just gonna make sure that it works. So let's do that. So I've got a monitor keyboard, plugged everything in, let's power it up. Um, there is a provision to put a switch in here uh, for on and off, but I don't have that switch. So uh, we're gonna have to rely on the screwdriver method. So let's go here. Is that it? Nope. Oh wait, it would help if I turn on the power supply. Power supply on. We got fan spin. Let's see if it boots up. Come on, baby. Well, that's not good. Um, let me quickly try another graphics card because the, the computer is booting up. The fans are all still running. So I'm wondering if there's an issue with the graphics card. Um, I know this power supply has some issues with power delivery. That's why I don't use it. So maybe just the single cable ain't enough for this graphics card. So let me, let me switch to a fortunately older, but less power hungry graphics card. One second. Okay, there we go. So it's, it's working now. Um, so yeah, so I don't know what was up with that 7870, but it's working with the 5770. So we only got one gig of VRAM, yay. Now I'm not gonna go through the usual computer YouTuber thing and run a bunch of test benches and benchmarks. And there's no real point. This was more about the case than the computer itself. And again, this hardware is from before some of you were even born. So, so there's no real point in running to see if it can run even Overwatch. This thing can barely run Skyrim last I checked. Uh, but it did run my streams when I first get it, started getting serious with live streaming. And that was mostly because it had a GTX 1060 with it with the NVENC encoder. So that pretty much did all the work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you wanna check out this case, link in the video description. Again, this is a single print, all-in-one open air test bench case for your computer. And if you need one of these, instead of going out and buying one, hey, this might be exactly what you need. Or heck, you just wanna build an open air computer. Uh, the, the, the files for this case are available. So if you wanna modify it, add some RGB, I'm sure you could have a lot of fun with some internal RGBs in this thing if you really wanted to. So check it out, link in the description. While you're down there, don't forget to smash that like button. And also if you wanna help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, check out those links in the description. Affiliate links don't cost you anything extra. Be sure to tune in for the thrice a week live streams. And if you wanna help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do directly, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon supporter. I'm Nero3D, the Canuck creator, and I hope you enjoyed the video today. Cheers.